What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on this video. I appreciate it as always. And for today, we are going to be doing something a little bit different. This is something I would like to include into my channel, into my regime, and that is talking about fashion week, whether it's in Paris, London, Milan, New York, wherever it might be. If there's some good shows, some bad shows, I wanna to talk to you guys about it because I feel like if you're interested in fashion, that's something you should definitely partake in. So that's something I wanna do and I feel like there's some interesting ideas, some controversial topics that you can talk about, you know, some big trends and some hot items that are coming out of fashion week. And that's what I wanna to bring to you guys today. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Let's get into it. All right, so Paris Fashion Week, the most iconic, you know, venue and setting for fashion. It's a little sad to see that we're still in that realm of like, you know, we can't really experience fashion week in person, you know, just the energy, the paparazzi and everything. It's just, it's missing, right? But uh, it's definitely been a dream of mine to really, you know, head to Paris and even just catch a few shows of some like really great designers and some favorite designers of mine. Uh, that would definitely be, you know, one of my dreams, whether it's Paris or even New York, right? So I don't want to get carried away into my dreams and all, but as you can see, I am wearing like a little bit more of like a classier attire, more classy, I should say, because um, I want to be like in that like fashion week zone, right? So uh, yeah, I got my blazer on, I got a little bit of bling and I got my beanie because my hair is like really like long because we're in lockdown, barbershops are closed. Blabbing, let's get into the video. So how I'm gonna be doing the video, I'm just gonna be talking about like, you know, the fashion shows that really caught my eye, the ones that really just kind of disappointed, uh, you know, just disappointed me, it wasn't anything spectacular. But I really wanna just talk to you guys about like, you know, uh, that brand focus, that designer focus, so really just kind of emphasize more on the, the more brands that people are interested in. So let's get right into the first brand and designer that I will be talking to you guys about today, and it is Elix 1017-9SM, creative director Matthew Williams. Um, I feel like Elix for the last few seasons have been really lackluster. I feel like, you know, Matthew Williams has really just kind of put out the same items and same products for the last, like I said, few seasons. It's just been very, it's been very dull, very redundant, and uh, I feel like it was just becoming a little bit boring. So um, obviously we all know that he's taken a role at uh, Givenchy as the creative director as well. So kudos to him for that. It's well deserved, don't get me wrong. Um, but I feel like that's actually started to uh, reflect on his leaks collection as well. I feel like when I'm looking at a lot of these pieces, like this one for example, I feel like you start to see Matthew Williams start to incorporate a better color palette. So you see with this beautiful baby blue and this bright vibrant red and it's simple like the the pieces in this outfit are very simple there's not like that crazy hardware that traditional leaks buckle like plastered all over uh, any of the pieces paired it beautifully with these beautiful red heels and it's just this look just absolutely works in my opinion and I feel like this is the direction that Alix needs to head towards is more of a, a broader color palette less on the buckle because I feel like the buckle was getting a little bit old in my opinion especially even with Dior having that signature buckle as well you start to see it in a lot of pieces and a lot of accessories and hardware so let's take a step back from that even though it's like that iconic hardware from Matthew Williams so I think if this Matthew Williams is going to be putting out more look like this then um, I would definitely really look into buying this next look over here we have this beautiful leather cropped uh, jacket again paired up with that beautiful uh, but looks super expensive belt um, again it looks like a Cuban link chain uh, I don't see any buckles on it as of yet which I do like because I felt like again the roller coaster belt is just really dull and old at the moment in my opinion but I, I still think it's a good staple to just always incorporate into his line but not all the belts have that buckle and that's what really has been bothering me about this line uh, so I really like the belt again like you just start to see his tailoring uh, he's wearing single pleat I'm gonna say wool pants paired up with these beautiful boots it looks like it's got some sort of calf suede on it, a brown calf suede, which I think is really important also for Matthew Williams to really start to dive into different fabrics and materials because you always accustomed to seeing him use like the nylons, a lot of, you know, the windbreaker materials and just straight, you know, 100% cotton. But now in this collection, you start to see him incorporate a lot of, you know, faux fur and like uh, Sherpa, which I personally love. I think it's a beautiful touch, especially for fall winter. You always start to think of like different materials as opposed to like that typical puffer or um, 
you know, just the long trench coat with again with the roller coaster belt wrapped around the waist. So I think this look is very effective. The jacket's beautiful. You can see he's starting to work a little bit more on his tailoring. The hem of the jacket is nice and short, which I absolutely love. So this jacket is definitely something I'd look into, but I mean, it's leather, so it's probably going to cost a fortune. So definitely not. Um, the next look, this gentleman's wearing a beautiful beige uh, trench coat and you can see again like he's incorporating a more subtle neutral color palette obviously pairing it up with some gray neutral trousers and you can see for the footwear they decided to add a little bit of flair by adding these metallic they look very reminiscent to foam runners so I'm gonna run off and say like metallic foam runners um, don't really know how I feel about them, but I do like the combination of this look I feel like that's more of like that statement in this outfit is the footwear So I do like that idea the bags you can see he's Incorporating a different material into the bag, which I absolutely love I think this bag is just a beautiful subtle touch and this is just a simple effective look And I feel like if Matthew Williams really starts to incorporate more of these items into his line You're definitely gonna see a leaks evolve into this beautiful uh, luxury but again, keep that same tech wear sporty line. And I think he's doing a tremendous job in this collection, as you can see. So shout out to Alix. This is definitely one of the best shows from Paris Fashion Week. In my opinion, this is all opinion based. This is why I have my own YouTube channel so I can voice my opinion and not just cater to the safe word of YouTube and just kind of play along with, you know, trends and whatnot. This is why I created this because I want to, you know, voice my opinion and my ideas. So, I mean, Alix, if Matthew William keeps this up, he's going to be uh He's gonna be a hot topic if he isn't already so all right so for my next one uh, which is actually headed by Matthew Williams friend and one of his co-creative directors when he was you know partnering up with him for Dior and that is Kim Jones of Dior and I felt like this collection was just absolutely bland I felt like this was his worst collection for Dior to date I feel like the pieces were just very unappealing, if that's even a word. I don't even know if that's a word. The color palette was very bland. The patterns was just, there was nothing really to awe over. The hardware, the accessories, the, you know, the bags, it just wasn't it. Like, I just felt like this collection was just very boring. And one thing that I've always kind of told myself when following like certain brands, if a simple pair of footwear or a simple pair of gloves is the standout piece of your show, then you know the show wasn't impressive at all. What I did like about the show was the actual winter ski boots, which I felt like were, you know, absolutely beautiful. But I do feel like they were very reminiscent of the Yeezy Season 8 puffer boot that we saw with Kanye's last show in Paris, which I personally loved. I felt like it was a beautiful twist on footwear, very exaggerative, but at the same time it had that subtleness to it where it wasn't like packed with certain patterns. It was just a puffy boot with a nice, um, gum sole it looked like or uh, rubber sole I should say but all in all I feel like we didn't see anything spectacular from Dior's show we didn't have like that beautiful oblique shirt or you know some beautiful hardware some accessories um, and we're really accustomed to seeing that from Dior and Kim Jones as Dior I should say uh, whether it was the first model walking out or the last one to close the show we would always be left with something to really marvel about but it, this show just didn't have any of those pieces so I mean it kind of sucks because with Dior you're always expecting the best of the best or even Louis Vuitton for that matter but I mean like it's just hard to always consistently put out a, a brilliant magnificent show and I felt like it was just boring like I felt like there was one or two items that I liked because it was you know uh, a nice design on it it was flowy the shirts were nice but other than that I didn't see anything that I would actually buy from this collection so uh, for me it was just a, a huge thumbs down and I would really love to see uh, Kim Jones uh, bounce back from this collection with a solid spring summer uh, collection which I'm sure he will do yeah man uh, Dior wasn't it this year sorry the predecessor of Dior I don't want to say like predecessor or enemy or anything like that because I feel like Louis Vuitton and Dior have always been like the head and the front runners of fashion for a very long time and Virgil and Kim Jones obviously have a, a good relationship so I don't want to say anything like they're you know enemies or anything but I, I do feel like there's a sort of competitiveness between the two brands maybe not between the two designers in person itself but the two brands I feel like right now are in a like battle to see like you have like the Louis Vuitton guys and you have the Dior guys right so at first glance when I saw this show I just I didn't understand and I still don't understand the direction of 
what Virgil was trying to get out with this with the show. Um, however, I feel like when I got home and I actually really started to take in a lot of the pieces and a lot of the looks, um, it made a little bit more sense, but I feel like there was a lot of solid pieces, but the show in itself didn't really make sense. So I'm looking over here at this cowboy inspired look and I love the cowboy hat. I love the exaggerated curved brim. The kilt, I feel like works somewhat with this look, but that bag is just horrible. Like it literally looks like a birthday bag and it looks like there's a horrible gift inside, in my opinion. Uh, the sneakers really threw off this look. I am not a fan of the sneakers. I'm not a fan of the way this outfit was put together. So I feel like styling is very important too when putting out a fashion show, especially like Louis Vuitton. Um, I feel like if you would have threw on the cowboy boots that were implemented in the show on this look, it would look a whole heck of a lot better. But going into the next look, we see this mafia inspired look. Like that's the first vibe I got from this look was like mafia mobster. So it's like, how do you go from that last look to this one? Like what was the motive behind this line here for Louis Vuitton? I personally love the look. I love the suit, double breasted pinstripe brown suit. I love the fedora. I love the, the bifocals or the glasses that this lady was wearing. I love the newspaper touch. I felt like it adds that 1950s vibe to it. The armband plastered with the Louis Vuitton monogram logo and all the way down just to the footwear. I felt like the footwear was absolutely suiting with this outfit. But if you're going back to the last outfit that I showed you guys, nothing really worked in that, right? So it just was kind of all over the place. But moving on to the next look, I feel like this look was one of my favorites from the whole collection because I feel like this is kind of what you want to incorporate into your line, um, which is a touch of both worlds, right? So you have that Western look, but you also have that modern twist to it with this like super futuristic chrome luggage bag or suitcase or whatever you want to call it. Um, and then you have like this beautiful uh, patterned, I want to say like it's a padded shirt along with like this kilt and then the cowboy boots to just really put this look together. I felt like this look was really effective. It was very beautiful for me. It was one of my favorite looks from the show. But then moving on to, you know, the next look where you have, you know, this gentleman wearing a, a, a super clean fedora and then an absolutely exaggerated trench coat. And then again with the pinstripe underneath with the layer and then the super futuristic suitcase. It's just like what direction was Louis Vuitton and Virgil trying to aim for? Like I just felt like it was very scattered and very all over the place. But I mean like going to going to a few of these looks, I feel like this one over here with the green fur and the green handbag, I should say, paired up nicely with these beautiful Louis Vuitton sneakers. This is more of what I expect from Virgil where it's like, okay, you have like this like streetwear aesthetic but mixed with luxury because that's what we're so accustomed to seeing from, you know, Virgil and Louis Vuitton. So this is the idea that I, I would like to see more implemented into Louis Vuitton. And then moving on to the next look, I should say again, this beautiful varsity jacket, which I would love to get my hands on, but I just know it's going to be ridiculously priced. Paired up nicely with these very cool shades. I like the jeans. I feel like, you know, they're simple, but I feel like it adds a nice like 90s look to it. Again, paired up with these beautiful sneakers. And I feel like green right now at the moment is super dominant. I feel like it's probably one of the most sought after and go-to colors of a lot of designers at the moment, which I actually I'm a huge fan of, but I mean Louis Vuitton, man, uh, I, I feel like there were so many good looks, but there was just so many horribly styled looks and just, I don't know, man. Definitely, when I think of this show, I like it. I would give it like a thumbs up just because I feel like there was a lot of cool items, but there was just a lot of horrible items at the same time and a lot of bad looks. So I don't know really what to, to make of it, but I mean, I, I, I personally like it. So uh, Louis Vuitton, Virgil would like to see a little bit of a rebound and just put together more of a solid collection like you did your first and second show for Louis Vuitton, which was probably one of my favorite shows of all time. So um, yeah, man, moving on to the next one. This one I feel like dominated Paris Fashion Week and that is Rick Owens. Um, I feel like this show was probably the only show that actually incorporated like face coverings for every single look. Well, I think there was like one or two that didn't have it, but they wanted to make that like the statement look. So that's why they probably didn't use it. But I mean, like we're in a pandemic, right? So it kind of makes sense to, to showcase face coverings in, you know, in your looks, which it makes sense. So my first and one of my favorite looks from the collection is this gentleman wearing uh, these super 
futuristic thin rectangular glasses and it seems to have like some sort of like uh, fabric draped from the back of the glasses as well and he's tied into a it looks like a rubber or leather jumpsuit which I really like you can see it starts uh, an asymmetrical zipper all the way down to the middle so that's obviously where you slip into and you can see here we have a beautiful look at the Rick Owens Converse collab which I personally love I love that they didn't stray away from the typical Converse look they just kind of added that Rick Owens-esque touch to it which is a super elongated tongue and a nice square toe or rectangular toe. I personally love this look. I would definitely see myself wearing the sunglasses and also the footwear. I don't know if I can really pull off the jumpsuit, but I really do, do love this look. Moving on to the second one, we have this beautiful, it looks like a leather jacket and it's all the way zipped up to the hoodie, but it has this little opening and it emphasizes the blue eyes, which I think is a super cool touch. Um, and you can see that he's wearing a face mask as well. This jacket already has gloves incorporated into it, which I feel like is really unique. Paired up beautifully with this like, I think it's the suit. I, I think this is a, another jumpsuit again, I, I'm pretty sure. But you can see that they layered it nicely. They threw on a, a, a pair of Rick Owens. I don't think it's the pod shorts, but it looks like the pentagram shorts. Yeah, the pentagram. And I love this look. I feel like this is such a unique look. Super beautiful, sleek. I really like it. Again, I don't think I could pull this look off, but I love the way it looks. I think it's very unique and very Rick Owens-esque. So uh, definitely one of my favorite looks from the collection. And there's just a, a ton of beautiful looks really from this collection that I'm just a huge fan of. We see over here that green again is incorporated into this line as well. So it's not just Louis Vuitton. It's not just like the Reese Coopers and, uh, you know, Casablancas. It's also Rick Owens. And you start to see, you know, these beautiful oversized green sweaters and even, you know, these green boots as well. I think Rick Owens definitely dominated the fashion week for sure. In my opinion, I feel like all in all, there was not one bad look in this show. There was some like strange looks as you can see there's you know some looks have you know they're in their underwears which is like very typical of rick owens to do so it's nothing new to any uh consumer or viewer in that sense but i mean i don't know man i feel like this was one of rick owens best collections in the past couple years so shout out rick owens man definitely gonna see myself looking to get a few pieces from this collection for sure so for my last one and this was one that i was really not expecting to actually really kind of fanboy over and it is Casablanca. I think this was again one of the most successfully put together shows in my opinion um, because I feel like the setting was right. I feel like you know the ambiance, everything about this collection was very beautiful. You got that like South Beach vintage 70s, 80s inspired looks and I feel like it just worked all together. Uh, this look again paired up nicely with just beautiful pearl necklace uh, these high-waisted single pleat white or cream pink pants uh, and we get to see the New Balance collab for Casablanca which I absolutely love. I own a pair myself and I think it's just a beautiful shoe. I love the pattern. The setting, it just works, man. This show was just absolutely beautiful. Moving on to the next look again, another pair of high-waisted, very loose trouser pants. I love the pattern of the top outerwear. Um, you got this beautiful diamond offsetting colors. The pink, it just works. Like these looks just really work. This is one of my favorite looks. You have this beautifully designed uh, sweater. It looks like a mohair sweater paired up nicely with these uh, black and white trousers again like everything about Casablanca's line was just super eccentric it was flowy the materials they used like you can tell it was just like silky smooth it, it just worked and the settings and the, the the filter of the pictures everything was just beautiful one of my favorite looks again from Casablanca was this beautiful look got like this silk bandana with a beautifully cropped uh, puffer jacket paired up with a nice Casablanca crew neck simple black trousers paired up with the beautiful brand new New Balance collab just an absolutely effective look and the last one I'm going to be showing you guys is just this white on white look with the Casablanca crew neck and uh, paired up with these flared single pleat joggers and I can tell they're joggers because it's got a drawstring at the waist. Again, paired up with the New Balance collab shoe, which I absolutely love. And I'm definitely going to be looking into grabbing and acquiring some of these Casablanca pieces in the future because I could definitely see myself wearing some of these and I could definitely see my uh, closet absolutely just working together with some of these pieces. So yeah, man, all in all, Casablanca was just 
definitely one of my favorite shows. I felt like the colors were just working, the patterns just worked, the setting of the actual show, it was absolutely beautiful. The, again, the filters of the pictures, it just provided that nice retro vibe and I, I feel like that's what really makes the show uh, successful and separate itself from you know shows that weren't you know too appealing like Dior for example but yeah man that brings an end to a video it's definitely gonna be one of my longer videos I hope that I shed a little bit of insight on what you know I thought were dominant and what weren't dominant in Paris Fashion Week 21 uh, so if you guys thought I missed out any shows you know I'm all I'm all for it uh, if you guys would like to you know converse down in the comment section below and just kind of talk to me about you know what items you're going to be looking to grab from paris fashion week 21 and certain brands that you know weren't showcased in the video let me know man i'm all open for discussions but thank you guys so much for watching make sure you do subscribe to the channel and follow my instagram that would mean a whole heck of a lot thank you guys so much for watching